Well, good morning. Thanks for coming. Uh, I am the uh, entertainment part of this in the sense that I'm not an XPL uh, expert, but I am going to give you a sense of what's coming next based on uh, my perch as a futurist, a sense of, as a think tank, what we do is advise the Global Fortune 1000 about really one thing and one thing only, what's coming next. Uh, technology is certainly one part of it. We do look at future trends such as demographics, climate, energy, workforce, globalization, a variety of other areas. What I'm going to do in this presentation is just give you an overview of what I think is this next evolution or this fusion of business and technology. And part of that, of course, is this conversation around XBRL, but part of it also is around what's next for finance. You know, how is finance evolving based on what you talked about earlier, which is this next evolution of business, and what are the new kinds of things that are the demand drivers that are lifestyle and work style oriented that might affect how we think about finance. In a world of cross-border assets, in a world of globalization, a world of major Fortune 1000 companies using virtual worlds, such as Second Life, for marketing and branding, what are the possibilities that the whole conversation around how finance needs to look and be is going to be transformed by new innovations, not just applications, but very fast moving innovations such as certainly Web 2.0, pervasive mobility, uh, what's next for what's happening with biopharmaceuticals or clean tech or the integration of the global supply chains. You're going to need transparency to be able to optimize your competitive advantage. So it's no longer, in, you know, in the old days, when I was at Apple uh, introducing Macintosh in 1980, you know, I was in charge of global business, and I also had vertical areas such as healthcare. The conversation was around, gee, that's cool, that's interesting. Then it became a conversation in the 80s and 90s. Technology was used as a productivity enhancer. Now it's all about competitive advantage. Now it's all about how you can get tremendous traction to be able to get that new drug into the marketplace fast enough, or introduce a new product in the IT space fast enough. Or maybe it's, you know, it's, it's, it's Procter & Gamble that's introducing a new kind of uh, wireless uh, toothbrush that I work with them on. Or it's Hitachi in uh, that cool new uh, life microscope display downstairs, which captures, you put your watch on and it captures galvanic skin response and gives you real-time information because home healthcare is going to be one of the fastest growing marketplaces in the 21st century. And if you knew that, might you, as a futurist, for a moment, might you plan your product strategies differently, or your investments differently, or your collaborations differently? Well, I think you might. So I'll give you a sense of where that's going. Um, first off, let's think about expanding our global view increasingly. And you know this intimate relationship between these four parts of the marketplace, technology, people, and process, if you're really going to think about for a moment putting on the hat of a futurist and consider what's coming next and how you can monetize it or how you might reinvent your career, reinvent your organization by going after some of these new industries, you have to also expand how you think about doing business. And XPRL and these inter the notion of leveraging interactive structured and unstructured data is just part of that conversation. It's an accelerator for those of you who are not that sophisticated, certainly. Now, I understand the governor could not be here today. Uh, you know, in courtesy to him, I did put that picture up there. But the notion of my work and my current book about the extreme future is to suggest to you that the future is going to be more extreme, more extreme change more accelerated change, more complexity, uh, at the same time, more risk. Now, the good part of that is you could flip all that around and say, tremendous opportunity. Because of the exponential increase in technology's power, every technology, like computers, is doubling in power in a year. That means genomic databases. That means breakthroughs in alternative energy. That means certainly breakthroughs in, in smaller platform technology. So everything is doubling in power. Just consider Moore's law as a metric for all technologies doubling in power and decreasing somewhat in size, expanding in capability set. But it's going to be extreme, meaning there's going to be extreme change. You're not going to have to wait necessarily for 10 years. I was downstairs talking to uh, one of the uh, exhibitors around his, his uh, presentation around hydrogen, hydrogen car. Right? Well, those cars cost 
about $1.2 million today. I can tell you that every car company wants that to be $50,000. Is there a marketplace for those cars based on that innovation today at that price point? Is there a mass market of probably three quarters of a billion people on the planet that would buy a car at that price point that could justify innovations in hydrogen and hybrid technology? Yes, there is. And I'm going to tell you it's not going to be 10 years. I'm going to tell you it's going to happen in less than five years. Why? Because of this exponential increase and explosion in technology. Uh, Tata Motors is going to come out marketed through Fiat with a $4,000 car. Right now, they're bringing that out right now. Now, you could look at all that and say, how can they do that? It's all about the exponential increase in technology. Um, what else? I ask this question to all my clients, Fortune 1000, uh, certainly smaller, large. You know, are you future ready? Are you getting ready for the future? What does that mean? Do you have a long-term plan? Are you considering what's coming next and this explosion of innovations and how it's creating more business opportunity? What are you doing to prepare next? Have you invested in the resources to think about the future and what that means? Are you developing more of a global insights for this? thinking about what's next. So that's a big part of the DNA of uh, my organization is to ask the questions, are you thinking of what's coming next three to five years, five to 10 years? Are you investing in them now? Certainly some of the technologies you're going to hear about today, such as XBRL, are about that. Now, I am not new to XBRL. I first started, I was talking to our friends from Hitachi about XBRL. About four or five years ago, I was working on a huge global infrastructure project. I was doing the strategy part for a uh, US bank and a group of banks in the lending area. And I heard about XBRL. You know, at that time, it was cross-platform, real-time financial reporting and transparency. And I thought, well, we're going to build this infrastructure. And it's going to have multiple portals and, and an ecosystem of 20 different kinds of players, you know, lenders and banks and consumers. And we're going to impact on about 20 million consumers. This would be a great time to use XBRL. Nobody knew what it was about or could implement it. So not every innovation necessarily by itself can be implemented without the right kind of committed people who have the expertise to be able to do that.